platforms that are open source and community owned uh, to give you a simple example uh, uh, decentraland or uh, people call it mana is one of uh, you know the uh, you know open platform open metaverse platform uh, and the good thing about the platform it is that it is not owned by any entity or organization right uh, the community has ownership uh, you know on that platform and there is a lot of scope uh, of creativity or as well as uh, you know uh, uh, openness to build stuff on that right so decentraland has open sdks uh, you know to create your own interactive content to import 3d models to own land on that platform right and the, the price and the value of that platform is decided by how much community values it right so the more the traction on that platform the more uh, you know uh, community attention is there on the platform the more the platform we value right and and people can build a lot of interesting ecosystem over the time on these kind of open platforms kind of uh, you know platforms that are uh, you know a bit limited uh, you know and owned by any organization or entities right so let's say uh, you know recently facebook launched uh, a platform called horizon uh, which is a, a 3d virtual world and soon they would be uh, you know opening up this ecosystem for creators to build stuff uh, you know on these platforms to even sell uh, you know uh, virtual things uh, on these platforms right uh so the entire ecosystem economy exists on those platform as well but uh, uh you know they are these kind of platforms are owned by uh, an entity so let's say uh, in a close platform uh, for selling an nft uh, meta would be charging 50% uh, right. commission right uh, but the pros of uh, close platform is that they are much more uh, experiential and they are very they are very high quality because there uh, there is a private entity involved there are you know full time employees that are working and building highly interactive experiences right uh, so the, the the kind of quality and experience that you will get in a closed platform is a bit higher uh, you know uh, as compared to open platform so give you a simple comparison uh, you know so let's say ubuntu is an operating system which is much more open source right but it's not used commonly by all kind of people right because uh, it's, it's it's much more open source and uh, uh, you know uh, especially used by developers but if you see uh, you know macbooks and mac os uh, they are a much more closed ecosystem but they are so experiential and highly interactive right so that's uh, so that's like a closed platform say the future of metaverse right using utilizing economies nfts and systems that are built in in a metaverse in multiple metaverses right so the the future of metaverse is 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 multi uh, right so there won't be just single metaverse or single kind of community that would be spending time uh, you know in, in one particular metaverse so there would be different kind of communities different kind of people spending their time in different kind of metaverse right mm-hmm. uh, but the kind of value that you a uh, wealth that you build in one particular metaverse that should have acceptance in another metaverse as well right mm-hmm. that is one uh, something which is very critical uh, or important uh, for metaverse to flourish right uh, so that is about interoperability so i'll give you an example so currently uh, if you see there are so many blockchains right there is ethereum there is solana there is cardano right which are building the future of web3 right uh, eventually in the future uh, it should not be difficult for user uh, you know to transfer assets from one blockchain to another right uh, if there is one metaverse that is built on ethereum and one metaverse built on solana it should not uh, those two ecosystems should not be isolated right mm-hmm. if you are spending some time on solana building some wealth on solana you should be able to transfer that wealth to uh, ethereum as well right Existed, you know, since 90s and since we have been using computers, right? Uh, whatever games we play, we get an avatar, right? And that avatar represents a digital identity on that particular platform, right? So when you play a PUBG uh, game, right, you get a virtual identity, which uh, you know, which you grow over the time, right? 
so traditional avatars have existed uh, you know since the existence of games and right now even you can see that on social media as well right so on snapchat people use uh, you know certain avatars which identify them and they look similar to that so traditional avatar have existed uh, you know a uh, lot but there has been a, a interesting disruption in this space as well right so through nfts right? where uh, nfts give you a true ownership uh, of these traditional avatars uh, you know by uh, you know for, uh, giving uh, attaching it with a unique address uh, and uh, uh, with the origin uh, right? so so uh, yeah so traditional avatars uh, is something uh, that is you can say uh, a gateway to a virtual uh, you know space or a metaverse